Hey, how's it going? This is Tanya and Natasha. <laughs> hey, 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 girl, hey. So the topic that we want to talk about today, you guys, is failure. Um, so pretty much I think in life or in, as an entrepreneur or in anything that you do in life, marriage, relationships, even starting a business or even um, going to that next level, taking a leap, taking a step of faith or even doing anything in life, I personally think that failure is definitely one of those parts that we have to go through to get to the next level. Because um, personally, in my life, when I've started a certain amount of uh, different businesses, I failed at least three to four times. And I still fail on a constant basis with businesses or even with the connections that we built or relationships that we make with other people or whatever that might be for you. I feel like we kind of have to go through those steps of failures in order to, you know, know what did we do wrong so we don't do it again kind of a thing, right? Well, yeah, I mean, failure, um, I think everybody on a small level um, has a fear of failure. But I, when you listen to stories about all the successful people, um, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Jeff Bezos, everybody has failed, and, and that's what's that's what it's there for is so you can learn learn from it so you can move on and um, do better like you know you don't see a baby um, we should definitely learn from little babies you don't see a baby like falling down um, after trying to walk and and then falling down once and going oh well I guess this is not for me so I'm you never know? gonna walk again so I'm never gonna <laughs> walk again you know you just gotta right? keep moving they, they 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 learn you know what their position was they learn um, what do they do wrong? And they're like, oh, okay, so if, if I, you know, lean that way, I'm going to fall, you know? So you don't see kids just giving up. For some reason, as soon as, as we get older, we become more and more afraid of failure. I mean, some people are... They true, kick, they true. Kick, they kick butt. But um, I'm guilty of that, where I want to start a new endeavor, and, and I have a certain amount of money in the bank that I want to invest, but I'm afraid to lose it all. Right. You know, and, and for some reason, I think that after I lose it, that I'm not gonna get it back again, or that's like my one and only shot, and if it fails, then then I fail. But mm -hmm. um, I really needed to correct that type of thinking. But the thing is, I wanna tell you is that, um, for me, for instance, the first business that we started, we failed. The second business we started, we failed. The third business we started, we failed. The fourth business, our first product, whatever we released, it failed. But then on the second try, we, said, you know what, let's try one more time. Let's get those juices out of ourselves. Let's just go for it. And that's when we succeeded. See? But see, the fact that we kept trying over and over and over and over again and we didn't let failure stop us mm -hmm. got us to the next level. Yeah, there's this really popular picture that I always loved is most people will keep going, keep going, keep going, but then they'll quit right before they're about to make it. You know, and, and right. they think they failed and they quit, like about half an inch away from a gold mine. Gold mine, exactly. Yes. There's a story yes. I read about. Yes. It's um, in the book um, "Think and Grow Rich." Yes. There was a story about a miner that got all these tools and started building, or started digging, 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 and then he finally just gave up. Probably like I think it was, you know, half an inch away from gold, and he sold all his tools and all his material to somebody else who just had to dig like half an inch and found the pot of gold, you know, and he just quit one inch or half an inch too soon. Yeah. yeah. He thought he failed. How crazy is that, right? Yeah, so I love that you guys I just don't, you know, sometimes I don't understand why people don't fully go all the way in to get to that next level. <laughs> the kitty wants to talk about failure Aww, too. Oh, come over here, baby. <laughs> Yeah, but it's either the fear of failure, and there's also a different type of fear. It's a fear of success, too. Really? So, so yeah, there's either one Why do you think other. it's a failure of, I mean... I think um, just on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum, fear of success is when people are like, okay, what if everything does take off and I can't handle all the responsibility? Ever had that? 
No. Like, fear. I would rather go all in. I like to jump in, figure it out on the way, and then um, figure out on the way. Hire people, outsource, get things going, ask people. The thing about success is you just find people that are already doing it and just follow their footsteps. Yeah. That's pretty much how it is. It's like 101, pretty mm -hmm. much. You know, in all success stories, you see, yes, there's failures. I have to be guilty on stuff. There are some things that, you you know, we're not aware of. You know, like, personally, you're just not aware of certain things or how to outreach more people, how to go to the next level. You're not fully aware, yeah. which that's why you read books. That's why you hire mentors. You hire coaches. You hire people that's already been on that level. And all you do is just follow their footsteps. You ask them, hey, this is my problem, A through Z. Where do I do? What do I do? Where do I go next to go to that next level? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, people that are entrepreneurs going to that next level, I think it's so important to ask for help. Mm -hmm. It is so important to ask for help. And that's something I'm personally guilty of myself is being afraid to ask for help when you should, as an entrepreneur, be asking for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, I call it the wounded... Uh, the wounded avoider you know you um you try something and then you feel like you're failing and then you just you're wounded and you're down and you're afraid you're an avoider you're afraid to talk to somebody because then you have to admit that you're failing or you right, know, or right, struggling right, right, and it's right. hard you know it is hard it is hard it's like you're either failing in your uh business or with the relationships that you built or whatever that might be for you um, if you're not asking for help, it's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Help me, pray for me, or whatever the case may be. Or what is, where do I find that funding? Or where do I um, find that next product? Or how do I do any of these different things? If you don't ask for help, how are you supposed to get to the next level? You know? Yeah, that's guilting. Guilty. It's been there, yeah. So, right? so what are your fears? Or have you ever had any that you had to overcome? If it's not failure, if it's not success, then... What are some of the fears you had along the way while you were building your empire? So building business, um, you're always afraid of what if you source a product and it doesn't go? Oh. <laughs> it's like, what if I launch this brand or what if I launch this, you know, next product or what if I launch this um, massive crazy, I invested so much money into something that I absolutely love and what if it doesn't go through? Mm -hmm. That's been one of our like, so when we started our business, for instance, the one thing that was just the most worst thing for us was um, we launched it, we invested so much money into it, and the one thing that didn't go through with it, it just, I mean, what, what the one thing that happened is that it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. So we ended up losing so much money, six months of wasted time, it didn't go through, and what did we do? We didn't give up. We didn't give up and what we did we launched the next product and then thank god the next product went it went strong it went right where it needed to go and then all the money that we lost we got back and then we got multiples it's because we never gave up mm. we never gave up and that was one of our biggest fears was what if you launch something and it doesn't go what if you try to push and it doesn't go like what you know obviously you're kind of worried about that it's like what if you do it and it doesn't go through so mm -hmm. that was one of the biggest fears for us when we were starting off our business but um what about yourself um mine would honestly be fear fear of success or failure sometimes it's both um because you know it's so silly to think about you know what if i invest this money like i feel like i'm gonna lose the money then what am I going to do? Well, I'm not the type of personality to just fold and give up. So, right. I mean, of course I'm going to figure Me it out. Me too. Of course I'm going to figure it out. But, like, it's just so silly. And it and it, and it holds you back um, from taking that next step. At right. least it held me back. Um, I'm moving forward now. But for a while, I was, like, holding on to this investment money for a long time and going, well, what if it all goes away? Well, I made that money so I can make it again. I made it once. I can make it twice. You know, I'll go right. get it. I'll get alone, whatever, you know, I'll figure it out because I'm not the type of person to, I'm not just going to be like, oh, well, I'm just going to sit and just live life of mediocrity from now on, you know, like, right, right. of course that's not going to happen, so it's just right. so silly, so that's been a fear, but also a fear of success, that's why I brought it up, is because I, um, I, 
I'm like, okay, well, what if it does really take off? And I, you know, starting anything new, you're, you don't know what you're doing all the time. And, right. and I'm like, can I handle it? You know, can I handle massive success right now? Because I've never had to do it before. And it's just fear, fear of success too. It's a lot of, it's responsibility and you're in, it's new. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had a little bit of both, um, honestly. But you know, the thing is for me, that that's something you shouldn't even worry about. Of, uh, it failure, crazy. Fear, fear of, of success. success. I don't think thing. I don't think you should ever think of it that way. I think it's a mindset. I personally think fear of failure is obviously a little more greater than fear of success. Because when you become successful, oh my God, girl, you can find all the help that you possibly yeah. need. You're like, oh my God, I don't have enough arms. I don't know what to do with myself. And so you go and hire somebody. You don't know what to do. Get a VA. You ask for someone's help. I don't think there it should be a problem of like fear of success. I personally think fear of failure is a little greater because we're all like afraid to get out of our heads and like you're stuck. You don't know where to go next or like where to push through and all that different stuff. That's more difficult and that's more challenging is how do you help that person go to the next level like how do you push them out of their comfort zone like get out go mm -hmm. do it like what is it yeah I'm guilty because I personally think to be honest for me my biggest thing was um I'm not afraid to try out things I just jump in girl I jump in I figure it out on the way that's how I've always operated my whole life I just jump in figure it out on the way if it doesn't click it doesn't click I'm sorry it just doesn't click you know but I tried I tried I tried to figure it out maybe the numbers didn't add up to me maybe something didn't add up to me where I didn't go maybe that's why I didn't fall through on certain um, opportunities that I had but at least I tried mm -hmm. I can't say I tried um, but I do believe that people do, do go through a lot of things in their lives where, um, some things stop them from doing things. It could be something personal. It could be something physical. It could be something in their lives where it didn't allow them to go fully in, which I completely understand. And I respect that. I give people space to be, you know, in their zone. But I personally think if you are a go-getter, which you are, I feel like you would have no problem achieving the massive success that you really want yeah. but it all comes down to how badly do you want it you it's know true yeah right? it's true and i really really want it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no but i mean you're right when you said that you know when you have the money you know you can get help and and that's the thing is to being able to ask for help and that's also something that yeah. i've had trouble with i struggle with that sometimes too i struggle with the fact of asking for help Mm -hmm. because I feel like I should know everything mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's a that's not a good thing that's that's not a good quality to have you should never not you should never be the smartest person in the room ever yeah. ever true. ever 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 you should always be that person that's quiet you're listening willing to listen willing to learn like what is my next big thing in life what if you're sitting in a room of so many amazing successful people and they tell you that one little nugget and that just takes your life and your whole um business to the next level because of that one little nugget it's because you weren't talking you were just listening yeah, yeah. you know yeah i love john maxwell as well and yes. he always says he's like he's like 70 yes. or something and he's like i'm so excited because he's like i'm still learning every single day yes and, and we are yeah and i love listening to him because he's more excited he's like i have I have such a long way to go. He he still he continues to innovate himself on a daily basis. He's like I still learn every single day because he's so full of wisdom. He's written many books about success. Yes. Um, but it just it was just that he's continuing to learn, mm -hmm. and that's that's awesome. So mm -hmm. I definitely could take mm -hmm. a few things away from that. We all yeah. Can. What kind of books do you like to read? Um, I I recently I haven't read. Um, I stopped reading like around the 10th grade. <laughs> and what? Then, yeah, yeah, but no, no, but now I have started back up again. So, okay. and, and, and it's not novels. It's not like science fiction. I actually read a lot of books that help me through the actual things in life. Like okay. I love, I read, which I really love. Um, I read a book called love and respect. Okay. Um, it's a great book about relationships. Um, just really helps open your eyes to certain things that you could do better. I've read How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh my god, I love that book. Um, Think and Grow Rich is another really, yes, really good one that too. I like. I just mm -hmm. got a book, and now like I love it because I'm so interested in books. I met a writer 
who writes books um, at a networking thing and and he gave me one of his books and mm. I've been reading it while I've been here in Washington and we're gonna get together after I get back to Arizona and we're okay. gonna sit and talk about it and okay. that book is about like what stops you from reaching success you know so mm -hmm. that's really awesome so I really work on reading books that kind of add make me grow make me mm -hmm. make me grow Self development develop I don't read any other books besides that yeah I have a whole collection now starting mm -hmm. of just books about how to be a better version of myself how about you I actually just read this amazing book, guys, that I recommend for everyone to read. It's called Crushing It. <gasps> I love Gary Vee. <laughs> awesome. Well, because I just love to put out my personality out there. Oh, my God. If I could literally do this all day, I would be in heaven. Oh, my God. Just sit here and talk and share wisdom and have fun with you guys and just share all this knowledge and joy, happiness, and just be myself in front of a camera and obviously share all the successes and wins and confidence and joy, positivity and influence people and like share my stories, you know, sharing stories. Hi guys. Hi Ida. Hi Ida. Oh, Hi Gualtiero. Hi Vera. Hi everybody. I know we're just talking. We're just having a girl talk tonight. Tea time. Tea time. Hey. <laughs> um, I just recently read Crushing It and I am obsessed. I am obsessed. I am obsessed because I personally believe the future is now. Social media is now. Connections are now. It's just growing so fast and so massive and I just want to be a part of that growth. I personally believe stories heal people and I have a lot of stories to share. I have stories to share from a very young age to my teenage years, to what I'm going through now, through success, business, joy, happiness, all these great things. I mean, if we can just honestly, you guys, be on uh, lives every single day and share our stories, and you don't even know whose heart you might touch, and it will heal their hearts just by hearing your story, you would want to do that every single day. No joke. So crushing it is my favorite. I personally believe you can have all the massive success through social media by talking to you. <laughs> That's it. That's all you really need, really. You know, you just need a camera. You just have a really awesome friend to talk to, and you can have everything you want in life, really. Um, so that's one. Think and Grow Rich has completely changed my life. Oh, you better. Think and Grow Rich, girl. <laughs> I, I didn't like, know. Like that's 10x. So awesome. Like 10x. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, by the way, 10x. Yes, I love love Grant Cardone. Oh my god, I can't even think. Grant Cardone. Um, I read his book 10x. Please read it, guys. If you want to take your life to the next level, read 10x. Just stop everything you're doing and read 10x. No joke. It's gonna multiply your life by a hundred thousands of degrees um the next book that i absolutely love is the five second rule by mel robbins i love 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 mel robbins um how to how is the book called how to win friends how to win friends and influence people is another really good book that i absolutely love it's such a great book um what else did i read recently i read um i read a lot of books they're all on audible i like to listen to books do you, do you like to listen or do you like to read uh, I love to underline and highlight and take yep. notes and like circle something in and write, oh my goodness, yes. So I can just go back and be like, oh yeah, I love that part. So I, I'm an underline person. But okay. if I'm driving or something, I'll listen mm -hmm. if I'm driving. Yeah. Um, but mostly I love to hold a book and, right. you know, right. Just, underline, circle, highlight, right. star. Right. By the time I'm done with the book, it's like, it's all covered in my own writing. Right. Yes. I am complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. If I can literally plug in. So what I do, I literally plug in my headphones and I listen to books at 2x speed. And because okay. our subconscious mind is always working, you guys, it's always working. So even when you go to sleep mm. and you turn on a book and it just constantly, like you just listen when you go to sleep your mind automatically accepts all of the knowledge. And even though you think you might like not remember something, but your mind always remembers it because it's always expanding. Mm. It's always expanding, we're always learning. So I feel like whenever we keep listening to books, that's why I love Audible. Because how often are you like cooking 
or if you're cleaning or if you're driving or if you're at work for instance or you're yeah. on lunch break like how often do you just say hey let me pop my book open and read you don't what do you do you obviously plug in your headphones and you just listen you're either listening to music or some, some kind of news or some kind of bullshit or some kind of YouTube video. Why put that, just put that aside and literally just listen to an audio book. It's going to change your life. Why wouldn't you want to listen to an audio book and have that completely change your life, right? Oh, yeah, at least an hour a day, like an hour a day. No, but think about it. Yeah. You drive to work, how long does that take? Mm, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. 15 minutes. Okay, how long are your lunch breaks? I don't get lunch breaks, but. Like one hour. Yeah, 30 minutes to okay, an hour. Okay, so like one hour, right? Yeah. Okay, and then when you drive home, it's 15 about 15, minutes. 20, 30 minutes. How about, what about when you go to the gym? Yeah. An hour. And cooking. Cooking. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So add all of that Sleeping up. Sleeping eight hours. Right, so that's four hours. You literally listen to an audiobook, and then when you're sleeping, because your subconscious mind is always working, you can listen to an audiobook while you sleep. Personally, I don't really listen to books when I go to sleep because I like peace and quiet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I sleep with earplugs, you guys. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I sleep with earplugs and I have a face mask on and it's real. I need peace and quiet and darkness to sleep. But your subconscious mind is always working. That's true. Always working. So I believe that leaders are readers. I believe that with my whole heart. I love to read myself. I encourage people to read. I um, love to listen to podcasts. If you guys are love podcasts, on any kind of topic that you want, relationships, business, um, how to get to the next level, whatever that might be for you, there's so many podcasts for that, right? Absolutely, yeah. There's unlimited, unlimited amount of things that you can listen to. Right. Yeah, unlimited, honestly. Right. Even just listening to people's stories of just anything that they have overcome or you know troubles that they've dealt with you know even that helps you know just to know that there are other people that have gone through something and they can help you get over it or get through it or whatever you know because if they can do it then why can't you so lots of audios yeah I love that yeah absolutely yeah when it comes to going to sleep I'll wake up with like my earphones like wrapped around my neck or <laughs> dangerous i gotta be careful i gotta get some like wireless little right? pods yeah because i've oh. tried that before I've, li I've listened to like positive music right. and talking and right right yeah yeah it's funny yeah hmm. but you know i personally believe the power of stories so much you know a lot of a lot of you guys always say natalia how are you so successful? How do you travel the world? How do you make all this money? How come you live this amazing lifestyle? How do you have a perfect marriage? How do you have, how do you travel? How do you do all of these things, right? Well, I must tell you guys, I'm not perfect. I'm beyond perfect. I have problems of my own. I have challenges every day of my own. I'm just like you. I am vegan. But do you think I don't have a slice of cake every other day or so? Of course I do. I'm not perfect myself. You know, I still want to look the best version of myself. I want to have a six pack. I want to have abs. I want to have this perfect body that, you know, we all strive for. But do you think I'm that person that's beyond perfect that you guys think I am? No. I mean, on a daily basis, I always have to correct myself in business or with my employees or with relationship problems, you know, or money issues. We all have money issues. We all have all these things that we go through, but I'm not perfect whatsoever. I'm not perfect at all. And if you guys knew the things that I've been through whenever I went traveling, for instance, all those bumps and jumps and all these different things that we had to go through when we were traveling, I mean, it was like the most hardest thing ever. I still remember when we just came to Japan. Um. Our Airbnb candled, our Airbnb canceled on us, and we couldn't fly to Japan because we didn't have a ticket out. So they wouldn't let us on the airplane until we bought a ticket outside of Japan, and we bought a ticket to Hong Kong that we never got back. And then when we got to Japan, we didn't know the system. No one spoke English. You know, so we had so many problems, and then what did we do? We figured it out on the way. So, you guys, 
we're not perfect. We kind of just figure things out on the way when whatever it might be. You know, everyone struggles with something and I struggle with it too on a daily basis. I still have to keep my mindset my mindset straight. I still have to listen to books. I still have to study. I still have to take courses. I still have to learn how to grow my business to the next level. I still have to constantly work on myself. Even though all you guys write me, Natalia, how do you live this perfect lifestyle? How do you drive a Tesla? How do you live in LA downtown? How do you have this, the most beautiful kitty called Prince? Like, you know, like all these just tiny little things or big things for you, but I still have those issues myself. So I'm just like everybody else. Hmm. Yeah. You know? I guess it just all comes down to a matter of self-discipline. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with that? <laughs> how do you self-discipline? You guys, I'm a workaholic. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. For all you people that don't know me, I work 15, 16, 17 hour days. I do. I work a lot. I work a lot and the reason why I want to work a lot it's not because I'm a workaholic I'm just trying to figure out how to get my business myself my my myself back to center how to get myself into the next level the best version of myself I I'm learning to love myself more um, that's a discipline of its own, on itself, but going for that run, making sure I make a green smoothie, making sure I um, think uh, positive thoughts, making sure I uh, love my husband a little bit more, whatever that might be, or business-wise, or whatever that might be. Um, I'm always constantly disciplining myself how to get to the next level, you know? Because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I have problems of my own on an every single daily basis. Hmm. I do. And self-discipline, it all comes down to what? <laughs> what Yourself. Is <laughs> what does it come down to, you guys? Yourself. Yourself. Okay. You can't make me do anything. I can't make anybody do anything. I can't make you do anything. Who can make you do something? You. Yeah. Well, I also read somewhere that um, here's the problem with self-discipline sometimes. What? You tell yourself you're going to do it. I'm going to do it starting tomorrow. Right. And then you don't do it tomorrow. Okay. Um, but okay, let's start over. It says, you tell yourself, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then you're, you're inside, your self-discipline, you're, you're saying like, heck yeah, you're going to do it. Yeah, we, we got this. Next day, a day goes by, you didn't do it. And then you're like, okay, I'm definitely going to do it tomorrow. And then somebody inside of you is like, yeah, yeah, we're definitely, yeah, we're going to do it. Absolutely. Tomorrow comes, doesn't happen. And that keeps happening over and over. And each time you tell yourself, I'm going to do it, and you don't do it. Sooner and later, your insight is saying, like, yeah, but probably not. Mm -hmm. And that's called the law of diminishing um, intent. You know, like, you keep saying you're going to do it, but sooner or later, you just don't believe that you're going to do it. Um, so, so you technically talk yourself out of it. So you talk yourself out of it. Yeah. So with self-discipline, I like... The Mel Robbins, like, one, two, three, four, five, go. No, it's five, four, three, two, okay, one. Okay, that way, yeah. Um, because you just got to do it. Not tomorrow, but today. Um, because each time you don't, um, you're getting further and further and further away from actually doing it. Because even your own subconscious mind no longer believes you, you know? Yeah. When you don't do something. Yeah. So it's really important to... So you deceived yourself. Discipline yourself to a point where... It's like, no matter what, mm -hmm. I'm doing it tomorrow, yeah. today, yes. now. Yes, know? I completely agree. So don't fall. And the only way to actually get stuff done is not to overthink it mm -hmm. and just do it, yeah. right? Absolutely. I think that's the number one thing. I sometimes struggle with that too. I'm not perfect. But I've noticed with myself, if I don't get that one thing done now, like yesterday, I'm not going to do yeah, it. You should just say Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Nike. <laughs> They got it down. They figured it out. They got just, it. Whenever you think about doing something tomorrow, just tell yourself Nike. <laughs> just do it. Just wear just, remember just wear your Nike shoes sure all day long. And this is not, this is not an ad for Nike, but they got it down. Like, they do got it down. Just they do. do it. I love it. I, yeah, I think so. It's too. not just do it tomorrow. It's not just do it later. It's not yeah. just do it someday. Yeah. Just do it. No. But you know the so since we're talking about just do it. I think the most important thing from all of this that we just talked about, you guys, 
self-discipline, self-control, you know, getting stuff done, business, relationships, everything, right? I think the number one thing that it all comes down to is self-love. Love, baby, love. I personally think so. If you don't respect yourself, if you don't love yourself, if you don't like where you're at, if you don't like how you look like, if you don't accept yourself 100%, that full acceptance of yourself, nothing is gonna be important to you. Mm. Money becomes just money, a piece of paper. Relationships just become a relationship. Business is nothing. Everything becomes pointless. Everything becomes on a whole different level of, I don't want anything. And the reason of, the reason being, I feel like, it's because you don't fully accept yourself and you don't fully love yourself. And when you don't fully love yourself, nothing is important. I, yeah, you won't want to do anything for yourself, you know? Yeah, and, Which is and if you don't take care of yourself first, how are you supposed to help customers? Yeah. Or anyone, like you. Like, I can't help you, I can't help my mom, I can't help you. I can't obviously help you guys, I can't help anybody because if I don't love myself first, if I don't fully accept myself, if I don't take care of myself first, go for that jog, green juices, veganism, read the right books, just be fully aware and present of yourself, like what's going on deep, like what are these issues that are going on here inside of you? If you don't take care of those issues first, nothing is going to be important. Mm. Yeah, no, that's totally true. Absolutely, I like that. Right? Yeah. Take I personally think so. No, I personally think so because think about it. If you're not truly happy, if you don't take control of your own happiness, no one's going to make you happy. Well, yeah, they say, how are you supposed to pour from an empty cup? You know, if your cup is empty, how can you pour into other people's cups? You know, I your know. cup is empty. You know? Because it's empty. That's why you just kind of have to fill yourself up first, whatever that might be for you. But what is that for you guys? Do you guys have any questions? Type some questions below, guys. Comment, like, please let us know if you have any questions. But what is self-love for you? How do you take care of yourself? Um, ooh, that's a tough one. Um, like, yeah, like, what do you do to take care well, of Tanya? Well, I, I mean, I'm a really big per, uh, person when it comes to taking care of others. So there are times where I forget to take care of myself. Like, Me I too. just feel responsible for other people. Um, I love, like, it brings me joy to take care of other people um but i definitely do come to a point where i just run myself into a wall and then i'm like okay i have to do something so for me it would it would um just me time you know whatever that is even if it's silly whatever no, it is but what is it for you i don't think there's a silly anything silly about well that. i have but some what silly is me, me time? times me no times, but what is the me time for you me time could be me um laying and watching friends like 20 episodes like and because just, it makes you laugh it makes me laugh it yeah. makes me happy so i've watched happy. friends you know like i um i love for sometimes me time is just cuddling up absolutely not going anywhere not having to do anything not answering work or business or anything it's just sitting there and watching movies or watching an episode or like 20 episodes of friends i've done that before like where i'm just i'm not here um and it also is like maybe going outside and just laying in a park and doing nothing. For me, it's a lot of nothingness because I have so much no, going on. No, it's not nothing. It's not nothingness, but, I, but, but that's what I'm saying. Me but time. you know, let me tell you what, why you're saying nothing. It's not nothing. You know what it is? It's alone time. Alone time. With whom? Me. Yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it's not nothing. It's just alone time with yourself. And when you kind of just throw away all of that noise and you start thinking about yourself, it's not nothing. Oh yeah, it's just quiet. I like yes. to just be alone Yes. and just quiet. Right. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. What I mean by nothing is like, I'm not answering calls. Right, right, I'm right. I'm not answering emails. Right, right. I'm just, just me, myself, and I. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's me time. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I just like to go, oh, I like a nice good meal. <laughs> Something that just makes my heart, you know, uh, melt, you know, like a nice, something just, I go and treat myself to this, like, amazing uh, lunch or dinner. Uh, um, 
but yeah, um, just what eating else? like a beautiful, beautiful plate of food, mm. like just splurging, you know, mm -hmm. and then getting ice cream and, you know, because we're, I, I, I try to be conscious of my health and I try to, you know, eat healthy and, but then just sometimes just going all out, you know, and just okay. and having this, this, that. Having a little splurge. I'm a foodie, so you're food, a foodie. yeah, I'm a foodie. So. I can't tell, you're so skinny and oh, beautiful. thank you, so are you, my You're dear. so skinny. I can't I just, even imagine I this girl food. being a foodie. My dream, I just want to travel everywhere and eat food and work out and then sleep and then repeat, you know, I want to travel, <laughs> eat, sleep, repeat, and work out. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Definitely, that's a goal. Like the, I love it. That guy that does uh, dinner drives and drive-ins and eats everywhere, like, uh -huh. dream job. You know? You're like, me, please pick me. Yeah. I wouldn't do your job, just choose me. Yeah, I need my own show. Um, no, right. but I personally think self-love, what you just said, honey, is so important. Yeah. You know, just canceling out all the noise and just turning off your phone and closing your computer, going for a morning walk, completely just being by yourself, being present with yourself and just listening to yourself. It's like, what does Natalia need at this moment? What does she need? Like, what is her concerns? What is going on with her? How can I help her? Or what what can I do to um, get her to the next level, you know? Or just completely being aware of yourself, like what is going on in her feelings, in her, you know? I think for me, just kind of quieting everything out and just being present with myself is very big self-love for me. And taking myself out spas, manicure, pedicures, all them good jazz, guys. All that good jazz, seriously. Just taking care of yourself, giving those lashes, your hair done, just beautifying yourself to that next level. For me, when I get these babies done, you guys have no idea. My self-confidence just goes way up, you know, instantly. <laughs> Putting on makeup, getting my lashes done, just, just that, just something so little, so simple. It just makes me love myself on a whole different level, you know? And then reading a good book, listening to an audio book, um, just talking to a really good friend, like we're talking right now, it actually makes me feel so good about myself. Mm -hmm. So good about myself. It brings my self-love on a whole different level because I know that I am fully appreciated and loved and this girl is my sister and she respects me, she loves me, she's here to cherish you know, me and we're here to give each other love and wisdom and see how I can help you and you can help me. And that's why human connections are so important, right? Absolutely. So important. Yeah. And um, I personally think you guys, in order for us to help other people, we have to take care of ourselves first. Whatever that might mean for you, going for a walk or even having a cup of coffee, you know, whatever makes you feel good, brings happiness and joy to yourself and having that pure happiness because no one else is responsible. Tanya is not responsible for my happiness. My friends are not responsible for my happiness. You are responsible for your own happiness. And I personally think you cannot go into a relationship, you cannot go into any kind of anything without filling up your cup first. You have to take care of yourself first. That's something every single person, even like Will Smith. Oh my God, I absolutely love Will Smith. The first thing that he said between him and Jada, his wife, he said, babe, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, it was one of my favorite I talks. Love I love that I video. He said, I am not responsible for your damn happiness and you are not responsible for my damn happiness. So we cannot come to each other expecting to fill up each other's happiness, fill up each other's cups because that's not how it works. You can't come in here and say, oh man, I feel like shit. And she comes in, I feel like shit. Let's make each other happy. That's not how it's going to work. It's true. I've seen that. Yeah. I it's love not. That and I'm guilty of that because I've noticed myself. I've done that a few times where I have came home pissed as a mother cracker and then I was just kind of like hey man how you doing oh you're doing great well that's not fair what about me <laughs> make me happy <laughs> what about me <laughs> tell me something tell me some joy tell me some peace tell me a compliment like you're searching you're in the need of that but why are you in the need of that is because you didn't fill up yourself first it's true right yeah no nobody is responsible and that's why self-love is important and your happiness is 100% your responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome 
welcome welcome thanks for joining us there's a comment I, that i wanted to read my question is why do we as humans rate how, how let me start over <laughs> why do we as a human race decide to alter ourselves so much that we stop looking like who god made us to be being healthy is great and working out but need to alter out our looks so much through surgery that we end up watching ourselves um, what is that? Is it a lack of self-love or is it an image thing? Well, sir, Mr. Justin Bieber, no I'm kidding, Justin Smith, let me answer that for you. I personally think women that start to alter their faces don't love themselves 100%. Or they're comparing themselves to someone. They start comparing themselves to a model, to Kim Kardashians, or they start comparing themselves to all these different people that they saw a kind of lip that they like, or some kind of eye that they like, or some kind of whatever that they like. They start altering their faces. I personally think it comes from a self of um, not loving themselves. I personally think so. What do you think? Um, self image, definitely. I mean, I think. Everyone is self-conscious um, to a certain degree, different, you know, everybody has something that they want to improve and I mean, yeah, God has made, made us one way, but when it comes to like health and fitness, yeah, like God wants us to take care of our bodies, you know, we only get one body and we need to respect it and take care of it. So um, when it comes to altering your image by like losing some weight or being healthier, there's nothing wrong with that because right. we're, we get one body and everything right. everything that helps you lose weight like vegetables and all the good um, exercise that's actually taking care of the body that God gave you so right. totally fine with that but yes when we go into um, you know just complete you know total surgical renovation of your face definitely a self-image thing because the problem is uh, most of the women in their 20s or 30s um, pretty much grew up since they were teenagers with I mean, media has been around for a really long time, and right. and we forget, we forget that we see everybody's highlight reel of all the photos that they have on Instagram, and we forget that that is not a real depiction of how they look in real life. Like, cause they'll they'll edit everything out, all the pimples, all the imperfections, all the fat. They will edit it, and I'm so happy with the new movement that they're doing where you know some girls are like hey here's my cellulite or here's this or here's that because it's yeah. it's really starting to it it's wearing social media and media and everything that's out there is starting to affect people's mental health so yeah. um so so especially the teenagers now especially because like like my little sister she's 14 and she pretty much grew up with the phone in her hand and um luckily she's a really nice girl but i'm just saying like it's only going to get worse unless um we just stop showing people what is considered perfect because nobody's perfect um but so it, it 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 really takes effect on their they have already self-consciousness you know growing up and everything like that yeah. um and and then they see all this on instagram and they're like they're freaking out you know and they think that that's how they really look in life and they don't and they do not at all um at all it's all photoshop guys yeah. don't believe what you see on the internet I mean, because it's all photoshop i read a story that now women and girls whatever are going to um their surgeon their doctor and wanting to look like their snapchat filters what i'm not i'm not even kidding because the snapchat filter it's really cute it kind of like makes your chin a little a little bit like this you know what it makes, the freak? makes your eyes a little bit bigger and they are now taking in photos of themselves that they took and on Snapchat because you know it makes your face all cute, and, um, <laughs> and 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 they're actually wanting to look like their Snapchat filters. But what I'm saying is, I totally saw that coming. You know, like uh -huh. yeah, it's cute to have filters and play around and everything like that. But people's mental health is being affected. Yeah, I'm not wow. even joking. It is wow. a thing. It is a real thing because you know we all like to put it on. You know, if we're having a that bad, is so weird. Bad I have makeup not, day I have not heard of that before. I have and and. It's because pe women, girls are not being taught or educated on the fact that, yeah, that's fun, that's cool, but that it's not real. Yeah. It's not real. Right. At all. You right. know. Right. And there's nothing wrong with makeup and, 
getting your nails done, doing your hair, getting your eyelashes. It's always fun to enhance and change up your look and stuff like that. But when people start to go overboard, that's, go to surgery. that is just, yeah. it's mental health combined with a lack of self-confidence. Self-confidence, Because if, yeah. you know, if they love the way they look. Or they start looking at Kylie Jenner and like, oh my God, but that girl has gone like 20 hundred mm -hmm. surgeries. You know, she just got her lips undone. She just got them undone? Yeah, she took all the fillers out. So people are like, oh crap, all the people that put in their fillers are like, okay, I guess small lips are in now, so they're all taking them out, you know? <laughs> okay, <laughs> stupid Instagram. Get off Instagram. What the freak? You I guys mean, get off Instagram. No, I mean, be on Instagram, that's cool, but just don't believe everything you see, you know? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. I'm, I can't make this stuff up. I, <laughs> yeah, she got rid I of her. I can't believe this. She got rid of her pout, and she looks beautiful. You know, I don't knock Whatever. other people down. I'm just saying that... All the people that are like, oh, big lips are a thing. They're like, uh-oh, well, we got to take ours out now, you know? Oh, wow, wow. Because apparently it's not popular anymore. But, you know, I honestly have to say, beauty comes from inside out. Yeah. It all is from the inside, you know? The one thing that I absolutely love about beautiful, confident, sexy, badass women is when you can sit down and have conversations like this. It's fun. They're real. They're authentic. They're all over the place, but the fact that we can just literally have those kind of rela um, conversations. I'm gonna move it. Sorry. No, to the left, you have to do the left, yeah. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Yeah, like it is driven by an attainable magazine brush look that society says is beautiful. Beauty comes from the inside That's out. That's what you're just saying. Exactly. Beauty does come from the inside out, you guys. We don't have to recreate anything. We have everything we need. Right, Tanya? Yeah. We have everything we need. Got it from my mama. Got it from my mama. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. We have everything we need, and all we just have to do is just be ourselves. When we're, when honestly, when we're ourselves 100% and not look at all these filters and all these Instagram models and all these filters and filters and all these whatever the girls are doing nowadays, they're only making themselves look more uglier. Well, I mean, like, it's it's fun. Just don't let it get to your head. Like, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just fun. Like, have fun with it. No, yeah. it is fun, but I personally think you shouldn't have to go all the way out where you're just kind of, like, completely botching yourself. Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying about... I'm no, saying I, Snapchat filters. Yeah. Right, right, right. But, girls, self-love is so important. Love yourselves more. Enjoy who you are already. Like, look at this girl. She got nothing done. Look at this girl. She's got nothing done. We got nothing done, and we're just ourselves. We're being real. Like, do you think you need anything else? Like, look at your lips. Look at your eyes. Like, look at everything. Like, why would you want to go and, like, screw it up? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not on your to-do list? No. <laughs> so, I don't, since we're on the topic. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's uh, we just got... We are all unique, and there's something beautiful and different and unique about each exactly, one of us. Exactly, you know? exactly. And and the more like you know how many Kim Kardashian clones there are out there. Like they're not, they're all starting to look the same. You know, like I look at a picture of you know certain friends that are together, and they all look the same, <laughs> exactly the same. I'm like, oh, who, who's that? Who's that? Um, because it's the same amount of work that's been Or, like, done. there was a moment everybody wanted to look like Angelina Jolie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Do you remember that? Yeah. There was, like, five of them all lined up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, it's the Kardashians. But the one thing I would say to all of those teens out there, the one thing that I personally suffered with when I was growing up from the ages of 11 till 18 is that whenever I looked on billboards or whenever I looked at magazines... I thought people, that's exactly how they look like. I literally was looking at these women. I was like, mm -hmm. there's no cellulite. These girls don't have pimples. These girls have these amazing eight, uh, eight, uh, figure eight, eight, what, what's that? Uh, yeah. Eight, the figure eight kind of. Hourglass uh, figure. Oh, sorry, figure eight. Oh my God. <laughs> it looks like an eight. <laughs> it does look the like an eight. The top is smaller than that. Right, right. Yeah. Like this hourglass figure is, girls, please. Please listen to me. It's not real. I myself always thought it was real. And I completely destroyed myself <laughs> all the time. It cracks me up. I used to think that perfect eyebrows is just how people, certain people's eyebrows grew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, really? I'm not even 
fucking kidding you. I am not joking. I was like, man, they must just have genetics where they have perfectly shaped eyebrows. I swear, I didn't know that it was like either like uh, uh, microblading. I had no right. idea what that was. I honestly, I was so naive. I believed that. That's, I'm like, wow, they have some great genetics. They have some perfect eyebrows. Wow. And then you look at their parents, their eyebrows are like one this no, way, I one just, that way. I didn't know. I looked in magazines no. and I was yeah. like, uh, no, wow, girl. That's, that's great. No, it's all Photoshop, babies. It's all Photoshop. And please, please, all you teens out there, just remember, whenever you look at those billboards, those magazines, those people are all Photoshopped. Just love yourself as you are, and those people in those freaking magazines are not real. They're not real. Even the Kim Kardashian you guys see on TV, she's all photoshopped. It's true. She will not put out an image of herself without her cellulite being there. It's always removed. And you guys think she doesn't got cellulite? Yeah, right. That girl got lots of cellulite. There's natural. But she won't tell you, and she's not going to put it out there herself either. Right? Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm finally realizing that it's not real. But yeah, I mean, it's hard. But what do you do to uh, boost your self confidence? Mm. I mean, it's always nice to take care of yourself, you know? Right. Um. So it's that's why you know we like to go and get our nails done or go, right. go fix our hair because like if you're not feeling good about yourself, then like it will affect you know what you do so it's right. nice it's nice I, b I totally believe in taking care of yourself pampering yourself right that makes me feel really good buying you know buying some new clothes just you know feeling feeling good because you work hard you work hard you work hard and then if you have nothing to give to yourself after working hard it's like well come on you know we all like the feeling of a new sweater or you know like right so that always feels good but it's not just all material um it could just be um, doing, I mean, even doing what you, s taking action and doing what you said you were going to do. Okay. Like that. that so could, staying true to yourself. Yeah, that could be To like, your own words. I could be like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I did it. You know, and mm -hmm. you automatically feel good about yourself. You consider yourself a doer. Yes. Um, a finisher. Every yes. Year. So, yeah, yes. that's, that's what I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. I, I'm not that kind of person. I I am so hard on myself, especially when it comes when I don't get shit done. I'm so hard on myself. I personally think I'm that kind of person. If I commit to something and if I don't go in all the way on it, I'm so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. So hard. Because I believe that whenever I dive into something and I actually go in full force and I'm like, Natalia, you are ready for this. It needs to be done because it's something I want to do. It's not like I, I took a project on and I did it just because someone said so or someone's doing it or whatever the case may be. No, it's because I want it. And if I don't go all the way in and I actually don't do it, I'm so hard on myself. And that's the one thing I... Uh, I don't know if it's like a blessing or a curse, but I, I personally think it's worked in my life so in so many ways because I am a doer. I'm an overachiever. I like to get things done. And whenever I actually go and do without thinking, like Mel Robbins says, five, four, three, two, one, do it, that boosts my self-confidence up like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So say do it. Yeah. Just do, do it. it. Yeah, because otherwise, if you don't, you're going to be like, oh, well... You're gonna, you're gonna actually mm. talk yourself out of it. Yeah, or talk down to yourself. You or know? down, yeah. And just be like, oh, you know, I suck. I can't do this. I'm, right. You know, I'm good for nothing, and then it just all. Down yeah. Down. Yeah. So. So how do we encourage our um, listeners to um, boost their self confidence? What do you think? What can just we tell them? Just do it, Nike. That's what I'm telling you. It's Nike cool. babies. Just do it. Wear your Nikes to sleep. <laughs> Just always have that check mark in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Just do it. Yeah, I think just do just whatever do makes it. you happy and whatever makes you feel good. We all know what makes us feel good, you know? You can feel it. You can feel, you can it. feel it. You can feel it. I can tell you. For me, it's like a new pair of jeans, you know? That makes me feel good. <laughs> that makes you feel Just do what makes you feel good, right? Yeah. So, last question before I let you go, my love. What's up? What is that next big thing for you? My next big thing thing is to um take back my life and um 
I, I'm really working on my personal freedom when it comes to time. You know, I want to buy a lot of my time back that I currently use on working and I want to invest it into me, which is discovering more about who I am and what my passions are okay. in life. You know, I know I have passions, but sometimes we're so busy that you don't really have, you don't really put the time aside in order to discover those and to invest into you. Mm -hmm. So I really want to buy my time back and invest into me. It's going to be a huge shift in my life. That's what I want to do. You? So buy your time back. Mm -hmm. Buy back my time. And by buying back your time, let's say you bought your time back. Mm -hmm. So what is that next best thing for you? Best thing for you? Next best thing after buying my time back mm -hmm. is um, it's going to be creating even deeper and stronger relationships with my family, with my mm -hmm. friends, with the people that I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's really my goal. Mm -hmm. If I can have a life of personal freedom, mm -hmm. financial freedom, mm -hmm. um, and having amazing, amazing relationships with my loved ones, um, with my friends, with uh, my family, and traveling the world and eating food. I don't need anything else. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't need anything else. I just want to have a life of memories. Mm -hmm. Memories. And in order to do that, I, I you, you can't you know, like if you work all the time, Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. you will only live one year. Like average, you get two weeks vacation. It'll take you 26 years to live one year. Mm. That's crazy. It is crazy. It's crazy, you know. So, and how much, you can't, I mean, I want to be able to look back and be like, man, I feel like my life has been like 50 lifetimes. No, so when I'm ready to, to go. So do you think money brings happiness? Money doesn't bring happiness. Money brings options. Options and opportunities and time and um, the time to invest in those relationships and the time to make memories and the time to um, have the money to travel and the opportunity to bless your family and your friends. So mm -hmm. it's just options, you know, because... If we're just chasing money at a job, working paycheck to paycheck, um, you only have enough t time for you know ha a couple of days off and to pay your bills. You can't really do a lot with that. I mean, you can get creative, but um, but yeah, no, it's not happiness. It's just what it. It's, it's all a the tool. options. It's a tool. It gives it's you options. Tool. Yeah, and I always knew that's what it was. So yeah, I I personally believe. I heard um, someone, I heard it from a really really good friend where he said. Money is a tool that only provides opportunities mm -hmm. to get you to the next best thing of whatever that is for you. Yeah. If it's travel, if it's living a beautiful life, if it's spending time with your loved ones, if it's spending time and becoming that next best version of yourself, if you need those tools, and those tools are money to get you to that next level, no matter what you want to be. Whatever that is for you, it's a tool that gets you to the next level. Yeah. So I personally don't think money brings you happiness. It brings you opportunities. It gives you more freedom of time, money, location, freedom of everything. But that's what, personally, I think what money brings to you. It doesn't bring you happiness. Yeah, I can't. I'm not, yeah, there, I never believed that if I buy myself the car that I want, that I'm just going to be happy for the rest of my life. You know, like, oh, I'm done. No, like, that's, it can't love you back. You know? <laughs> yes, it doesn't love you back. You it can, doesn't. You can, you can love a car, but it won't hug you back. It won't, <laughs> it won't say I love you back. Some people say it does. I don't but know. But it's not true. No, no, no. It's, it's all about relationships, you know? Oh I personally gosh. think so. It's all about connections and relationships. Yeah, I've been here for, um, I've been here for in Washington for two weeks, yeah. and I couldn't figure out why don't I want to go home, you know, because I've just, all I've been doing is creating memories and, and having relationships with my family and friends and talking and like, it, like I just want to live my life like this all the time, you know, yeah. like I'm yeah. like, I don't know why I don't want to go back, obviously, because I'm, that, this is what makes my heart tick, and, it makes and it I love it, I absolutely love it.
it gives you a fulfillment. Yes, I want a fulfillment on life. You actually feel like you're living for, like you have a purpose of some kind. You know, yeah. you feel good about yourself, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Yes. I, I just want to live these two weeks, twenty six times a year. <laughs> so it's <laughs> that fifty-two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hey guys. Well, if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. This is this was a segment of Ladies Tell All. Mm -hmm. What's on our mind with a cup of tea in our hands and just enjoying life. And we will be. Uh, I will be contacting this girl pretty a lot actually. She's she lives in Arizona, so we will be getting on Skype and talking on Skype. Um, actually, Facebook Live. And so, if you have any questions, DM, DM us. Let us know, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Have a great night. Thanks for catching us this late. But we love you and cherish you all. And um, we will catch you guys later. Love you. And before we go, actually, I want to do something really fun. There was a filter that I absolutely adored. <laughs> Hey girl, hey! I love all of them. Uh, hey girl, hey! I think my ultimate favorite one. Wait, what is this one? Oh, hey. Is that a bunch of poop? This is my favorite one. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for joining us, and we will catch you later. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> ciao, ciao.